All right, that being said, let's look at some of the cash game hands we played while we were four tabling. So this was, um, this was a spot where I felt like I attacked um, a range that I thought was capped because I didn't think people would be balanced in this spot. So um, we'll take a look at the hand. A7 suited in the big blind. I check, villain checks back. Um, check again. So we get to the river. And at this point, um, it's not a bad idea to throw out some bluffs here. Um, obviously, the hijack has been very passive this whole line. I think in game, no one is checking an ace of diamonds to the river. Um, that being said, they don't need the ace of diamonds to bet call here um, or to raise and then call it all in, in theory. So I think if we take a look at the solution, there should be some ace of diamonds that get to the river. It's possible. But getting to the river, let's see what hijacks top of range looks like. Um, yeah, they, they have plenty of ace of diamonds combos here, um, it seems. So there's a f there's even some straight flushes in there uh, and some flushes, best hands. So yeah, so they have uh, check down ace king. They have pocket aces with a diamond. They have um, ace jack offsuits. A lot of different combos there. Um, so they shouldn't be uncapped in theory, right? That being said, um, I ended up going for a bluff um, in which I think the solver is just going to mix a whole lot of different hands. Um, I guess uh, we could take a look at the blocker scores of some of the better hands. Uh, maybe something... Uh, Your opponent holds the eight of diamonds. Okay, so yeah, so obviously the best one is the ace of diamonds, right? Um, if your opponent holds the ace of diamonds, your check frequency will increase. And if your opponent holds the ace of diamonds, your bet frequency will decrease, right? Um, I'm not really sure how to break down the blocker scores, to be honest. But... I do think that, yeah, see like this makes more sense for me, the way they lay it out in trash removal and value removal. So if we have, this is, this is what's very interesting to me. I've noticed on these monotone boards that complete like a four flush or a five flush, the, the, the combos that end up bluffing the most are like the ones that have a uh, connectivity on the board but I don't really understand the theory behind it yet. Um, but the value removal is the highest when you have like top set on this texture. And that's the hand that actually bluffs the most, which is, I think really interesting. Cause I don't, I don't understand why that is like, why is it pocket jacks is such a high frequency bluff. Why is it that a four in your hand is such a good bluff? Like we're not blocking, You know, like, it's it's kind of strange to me. Is it because villain is supposed to call more or raise with those combos in their hand as well? It looks like a lot of their bluffs are coming from a jack. So maybe because it has an offsuit Broadway combo attached to it. So, for example, like ace jack. Right? King Jack, Queen Jack. So perhaps having Jack Jack is good because it removes the Broadway combos that have the Ace or King of Diamonds. That would make sense to me. But then you see the four is also a very good bluff card, right? You see Jack four, eight, four, seven, four, six, four. So in terms of that, there shouldn't be too many combos of a four that have an ace of diamonds, king of diamonds at all, right? Like, 
So there's some kind of weird theory going on here that having the jack or the four or whatever is a good bluff. And I can't quite figure it out, but maybe someone more versed in theory can explain it. Anyway, I go for a bet. Villain raises the river. And at this point, I just thought the pool uh, is not going to be checking an ace down enough. They're just not. They're just going to be capped at the river. So I decided to attack it, put in a three bet, um, and that worked. But that's not very solver friendly. Uh, but the question is, what is solver friendly, right? Like if I do think someone is potentially balanced in this spot, what hands do I want to take um, to the next level uh, as a bluff? And I think the answer, which is why I was covering it before, is jack-jack and like those combos that um, have board pairs. So if we take this line, we have big blind raise, hijack raise. Our bluffs are going to go 85% all in and 50%. Um, and the trash hands, again, are going to be jack-jack, jack-4, right? 4x. It's just, it's so interesting. I can't figure out why the heck it is happening. Pocket threes, like all of these hands are really good for um, maybe it's because they unblock the folds. Like maybe like fill in is if we, let's say we jam, right? Let's look at the jam node. Let's say we jam pocket jacks. Uh, pocket jacks, what is calling? Well, ace jack is pretty high frequency in there. So that makes sense to me. But let's say we jam something like pocket fours, right? Well, what the heck is pocket fours doing here? Um, absolutely nothing, right? There is no 4x range in villain, villain's hand. Um, so maybe, just maybe, uh, pocket fours is good because it's unblocking all of the folds, right? All of these hands here, all of these hands here, it's just unblocking all of them. So perhaps unblocking these random bluffs from villain is valuable in, you know, getting folds. Um, because what are villain's bluffs, right? I guess we have to work backwards here. Villain's bluffs for the 52... Can you maybe show the trash and value removal of those again? Uh, sure. Which ones? <laughs> Any real champions in this channel? Not yet. Soon. Soon. I'm waiting for the main event to run good. That's what we've been doing. Um, trash and value removal of, of which ones? So what are their bluffs? Their bluffs are the same idea. Jack X, some ace king, some ace ace. From the jack and the four. Uh, but what, which node, right? Are you talking about Facing a three bet, or are you talking about something a different node? So it looks like, yeah, facing three back. Okay, so this one, so this node here for the big blind for us to bluff. So like here's our value removal, right? The best value removal hands, which are obviously an ace or king of diamonds, and then Jax is up there with the next best value removal. So it looks like, it looks like somehow Jax is just blocking enough. Ace Jack, whatever, King Jack, to make it a good bluff. Um, 
However, Ace four. Is obviously a flush. Yeah, it looks like a jack is often used. Um, trash removal, right? So we want zero trash removal. So something like queen eight. Jack five, jack six, jack eight. 8 4 6 4 so i think i think that's possibly what it is is that it's not blocking the trash that's folding i think that's why we see the 4x combos like 5 4 offsuit come in with like these bluffs right I think that's what it is. I think it's just not, even though it's not blocking any value, it's not blocking the folds. It's a very like weird scenario. So in the future, <laughs> hey, RTS coming in with a subprime for eight, six months. Thank you very much and welcome back. Really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, I think, um, so in the future as a heuristic, I guess just having like a board pair, the top card is going to be good. Like, let's say we change this scenario, right? Let's say we change the scenario around and the, and the flop is a 10 of diamonds. How does that change our river jam? Is it going to be pocket tens now? Because that would make sense, right? Um, yeah, pocket tens. There you go. So at least we're finding like a heuristic as to like what hands to choose to bluff with. I wish I knew deeper that interaction, but I think at least we have a heuristic to, to go by now. Um, this was an example of me multi-tabling and not paying enough attention to my combos. So I three bet ace king. Um, Villain called hijack, flop king, jack eight. This is just a range bet from us. Uh, turn is where it gets interesting because we can either mix check or uh, smaller or medium bet. I enrolled in a master's program now, so I have all the student perks again. <laughs> nice. Oh, they give you free Amazon Prime. That's cool. It's not a bad perk. Discounted? Oh, what? They don't even give you free Amazon Prime? All right. School is just not what it used to be, am I right? Ace King. So yeah, so we can, we can check or small bet or medium. And then on river, villain goes large. Um, and looking at it now, it's kind of like, okay, yeah, we block ace queen, we block nut flushes, we have a king, we block, you know, pocket kings if they ever have that. I don't think they do um, for flatting the hijack, but uh, this is a good bluff catcher, right? Just call. We don't need to turn this one into a bluff. We have some showdown value. They could have turned something like pocket sevens with a heart into a bluff. They could turn pocket nines with a heart into a bluff. They could turn maybe like something like queen 10 into a bluff. There's, there's, I think there's a decent amount. Most of their bluffs should come from like low pocket pairs with a heart, I think. Um, but they definitely have uh, some, some weak hands here. So if we go to the bluff spots, they're going to have some 8x. Yeah, so some bottom pairs, right? These are both bottom pairs. Um, they're going to have low pocket pairs with a heart, like I mentioned. Um, they're going to have the queen 10, like I was mentioning, right? So they're going to have these combos, which we just straight up beat. Um, that being said, against a recreational player, 
uh, they're probably not turning a queen or a jack into a bluff. They're probably just checking. I think that's going to be the most common leak for recreational players is they're not going to turn like a pair into a bluff almost ever. And in which case, mean which means they're just under bluffing in general. So you can overfold to the recreationals in a spot like this. Um, that being said, uh, yeah, I need to uh, I need to just call and then. In response to that, right, our bluffs are going to be blocking the top part of their ranges. So what is the top part of the ranges? Well, flushes with a Broadway card, um, ace queen, pocket jacks, uh, and ace king does block the nut flush, but it's just not a good hand to turn into a bluff because we, like I said, we unblock these combos and we block the strong hands. So ace king is just a really good call. Um, the hands I should be bluffing with, if you're curious about that, if villain goes, the most common sizing here is 86 or, I mean 150 or all in, um, but I think most of the pool is not going to bet 150, they're probably going to bet large like villain did, but if we do need to find a bluff, it's going to be um, from queens with a heart, ooh, queens without a heart, actually, I lied. Um, Queens with a heart, is that there? Where's Queens with a heart? It's just not really in our range. Oh, sometimes we're just bluff catching against it. Okay. So Queens with a heart is also is also bluff catching. Queens without a heart is in fact jamming, which is pretty interesting. Um Yeah, so Queens with a heart are the or queens without a heart are the only bluff there versus an overbet we're mostly just calling it seems we're mostly just calling um or folding because i guess the range is so polarized with the 150 sizing we just play bluff catch right and we have we have some nuts and then we have like very little bluffs there um let's say they go 86 percent right Then I think we start seeing more queens with a heart bluffing. Yeah. So the smaller sizing they go, the more we bluff with our all in because we can uh, add more combos in there for one. Um, and for two, we're blocking more relevant hands that. Um, yeah. That are going to call an all in. So, like, when villain bets 150, they're repping a flush. They're pretty much only repping a flush um, or a set or a straight. Okay, I lied. I lied. They have sets and straights, but there is some flushes. But the, the main hand you can see is ace-queen here, right? So that's why we have queens without a heart. Uh, just calling. And then queens with a heart, uh, without a heart, sorry, queens with a heart, just calling queens without a heart, uh, bluffing, because once we do jam, most of their call range is ace queen, right? So yeah, we, uh, we overplayed that hand. I ended up shoving and they had ace queen, <laughs> funny enough. So perfect example of why we need to have relevant blockers to the to their range. I missed the hot GTA wizard solver action no delay. We're still on no delay. Pretty sure, right? Yeah, on no delay. You've missed nothing. You're here just in time. Um, 6-5 suited. Well, you missed a little bit, but you can go back and watch if you really want. 6-5 suited. We open cut off, get 3-bet. We call flop 994. This is a spot where I can mix small bet and check. I decide to check. Villain goes for a check again, and I decide to start betting. Um, pretty standard. We get raise, call, pretty standard, and uh, villain jams. Um, I should have stronger hands here, I guess. Um, villain can check raise flop with over pairs, but I didn't think they would double check. 
so in theory, you can check twice with an overpair. I think. In practice, I find most regs are just going to overbet or bet large on turn. Um, when they whiff the check raise on flop, right? Like aces, I feel like you see a lot of players just bet turn. But in fact, um, it is a good spot to check twice, right? 80% um, check, in fact. So after checking the flop, you typically want to... Ch so here, here's a good heuristic for you. Whenever you check the flop out of position in a three bet pot, the most common thing to do uh, is check again. So if you're ever in doubt after three betting and checking the flop out of position with your strong hands on what to do on the turn, just check. You can check. It's fine. Then you can start check raising like they did in this hand, right? That being said, they turned ace jack offsuit into a check raise bluff, which was kind of strange because that is not even close to what the solver wants to do here. In fact, the solver wants to just fold. Um, so kings, queens, and jacks are going to be the value check raises. Aces are going to trap. And then um, the bluffs are going to come from something with equity, like ace five suited, which has a gutter, and um, maybe something that blocks ace nine, if I ever have ace nine, right? Uh, but the raises here, the, the, the bluffs are going to be six, five. They're going to be eights is kind of like a merge, right? Um, but queen jack suited. So what's my range, right? Like what's the top of my range? The top of my range for taking this check line and then bet is queens, uh, kings, queens, and jacks, right? That's the, that's the best hands that I have here other than trips. Aces, kings, queens, and jacks. So what villain wants to check raise on turn is things that block my queens and jacks, which are queen jack suited, right? So that's why we have a check raise bluff from the small blind being queen jack suited, not something like ace jack, where yes, you're blocking my aces and jacks, but you're also um, blocking my weaker hands in ace five, right? Um, you're also blocking my weak hands in ace 10, um, in ace king, that might be turning my hand into a bluff, right? So. Uh, Ace X is not the ideal bluffing candidate. However, uh, Queen Jack is. It's blocking the most combos that I'm going to have for value for for betting large turn. So they did they did take this line and like you know, it's good to see that people are actually finding bluffs here on turn. Um, and in game, on top of all of that, I had a timing tell where I thought the the cadence of their check raise was very reactionary. Um, which is hard to explain unless you just kind of build the intuition to see like, okay, there's a certain cadence that if someone's four tabling, right? If someone's four tabling and then all of a sudden they pause for 10 extra seconds that they don't normally pause for, and it kind of seems out of rhythm, that means they're trying to think about something. They're trying to think about what my bluffs might be, what my value. They're usually not thinking about what my value might be, right? Because if they're trying to think about value, it's usually intuitive. It's usually like right away, click, okay, I have aces, I go all in, right? But this was kind of like a weird, like delay check raise on turn and then on river it was kind of like a snap all in which makes me think okay they were thinking about okay what do i want to check raise on this turn and fire river with right too fast check raise it's hard to explain it's just it's more it's less so about the speed and more about the tempo of the of the lines that you see um certain regs you just play against them for so long that you start seeing a tempo in all of their their play and the second they break tempo, that's when you start seeing some um, things that like don't really add up, right? Top set trapping here too. Um, let's see. You mean like trips? Because there's only one combo of trips. That's going to check raise though, I think. Yeah, uh, raising ace nine. So checking flop, checking turn with ace nine, and check raising. 
quads is trapping mostly. Um, this is an example of a spot where I it pay, I got paid, but it was probably a bad play, right? So I need to be hard on myself on these spots too. Um, quads, yeah, quads is trapping. Quads is trapping the most, probably. 9-8 suited, we three bets, we get four bets. I call, flop a flush, check, and I decided to just jam because, first of all, I think my... My mental game wasn't good at this point in the session. I had just lost a huge pot. I was just, I was exhausted from making a lot of decisions. And I was just like, it's just easier to just jam here. That being said, I didn't think it was a terrible jam in the moment. I thought, hey, this, this makes sense to have some jam frequency. Like, what do I do with pocket tens with a club? What do I do with pocket jacks with a club? Probably just want to get it in, right? Um, so I decided to jam, but... Solver wants to just trap here with 9-8 of clubs. Um, it's also important to note that the flop is taking away a lot of villains uh, flush combos because Button's 4-betting range uh, as a bluff are going to be hands like um, Queen-9 suited, King... Uh, King-9 suited, is, is that part of it? I don't think so, actually. Um... Maybe it's not taking away that many flushes. Other than ace king suited, ace queen is not four bidding. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there doesn't take away a lot of four flushes here. Let's see. Were there what were their trash hands, right? Yeah, queen nine suited was in there. Okay. Queen nine suited. Uh, king queen off suit is kind of taken away, but that's not a flush. What are some flushes that are being taken away by the king and the queen for a four betting range? I guess we can look at the button here. Um, so, look at four bets. Only queen nine, it looks like. There aren't any suited kings that are four betting as a bluff. And there's only queen nine. Okay, so they have all of their flushes, actually, which may be a good um, argument to not jam this hand. We do, in fact, have jams, um, but it's going to be like those hands I was saying earlier, like... Pocket nines with a club, pocket eights with a club, combos that um, are hard to be dominated, but you know may, might have some fold equity against weaker hands. Like getting queen nine to fold with pocket eights is a big win, right? Um, I wonder if the flop takes away some flushes from villain if we don't just jam. But it looks like most of our jams are going to be from vulnerable, like mid strength hands like notice all of our best hands aren't jamming it's only our good hands it's like that medium strength hand category where the spr is small and we can just get our money in because we have enough equity but the best hands want to trap because yeah that makes a lot of sense when the spr is very low you're essentially looking to kind of trap those like top end range hands and then get in the medium strength hands I think you don't have 8-9 suited. Uh, yeah, there's no 8-9 suited in 4-betting, I don't think. Only 10-9 suited on the button. Well, maybe a, a sliver. But 10-9 and 10-8 are better 4-bets in general. I'm from China, no, no worries. <laughs> you didn't say anything wrong. Uh, so yeah, that's an interesting, interesting spot. Um, I should have just trapped. So let's say we call, turns a brick. Now at this node, I feel, first of all, we can start leading an all-in jam, which is interesting. 
top pair hands, it looks like. And then the same hands that we were going to check jam in the first place, playing like a weird delayed jam line. Other than those. Oh, you're talking to, to G Dold? Okay. You dude. No worries, no worries. Welcome to the stream. Um, so we play the check line on turn and then what, right? Villain bets, and then I think we should start having some jams at this point, but maybe not. Maybe we just, we, it looks like we're still playing our best hands as a call. We're just still trapping all of our best hands here. Even though if villain checks back river, we don't get all our money in, right? The only best hand that's jamming now is 8-7 suited. Everything else is still just slow playing here. I wonder if we jam river ourselves. Nope, still checking. So in these 4-bet pots, it, it pays to just slow play, I guess. Right? The, the top ends of our of our range here. Luckily, they just had aces and called, so that was nice. All right. Next hand, 8-7, we raise, get called, I checked back. This is, this is one of those hands that just doesn't have a lot of showdown equity, but has a lot of backdoor equity, so we want to be betting the flop. Um, at a high frequency, this is a good texture for us anyway. This constitutes, um, I think, one of the perfect trash hands that can go in our polarized betting range. So you see a lot of like small and uh, mid-sized betting here. On flop, I think we're just going to have a high c-bet in, in general. We're going to have a 70% c-bet in general. But the ones that are going to c-bet the most, right? 8-7 suited is, is right up there in the highest frequency c-bet. Because, um, again... Trash hands that have high equity and, and good backdoors are going to be the ones you want to be betting because checking back and then now you have eight high, right? Not much to do in that spot. So I need to be more proactive betting my weak trash hands here. Um, maybe I just rolled uh, an RNG mindlessly and decided to check. Makes sense, dry texture and king x flop. We have so many good turn cards. What is your range advantage on this King 10 3 rainbow flop? Um, looks like 53% equity favorites, 22% best hands, and our range morphology seems to be very geared towards medium and good, good hands. Theirs is geared a little bit more towards weak and trash hands. So small bet makes a lot of sense because they're going to have a lot of trash and a lot of weak hands that just fold. But yeah, we can have a few different sizings on the texture. Um, including some, some over bets here. So I missed a C-bet on flop. I'm not going to address the rest of the hand because that, I think, is the biggest mistake of the hand. Uh, King-10 offsuit. Actually, no, I lied. That's not the biggest mistake. I think the biggest mistake was River. Um, so I ended up checking back and hitting a 7 and then calling turn. So calling turn is okay because we're blocking a lot of the value hands they're going to have on turn, unblocking all of the diamonds and all that stuff. But then on the river, they go for another overbet, and I call again, and this is where I make the biggest EV mistake. Um, because we're not really blocking the appropriate combos, and we have a lot of better hands to um, to call river here with, right? Villain is repping uh, two pair plus with a king. We really want to have a king versus an overbet. We have enough kings that we check back. Um, some bluff catch here. 
So, or we want to at least block something like king queen. Like the bottom of their overbetting range, I think, is going to be two pair. Yes, they're going to have some three three as well. Um, so when they overbet, we uh, we want to continue with some seven x, right? Um, and then once we get to the river and they overbet again, the combos that we want to call with are going to be blocking more value. Hands like obviously two pair are going to be easy calls, but all of our calls are going to mostly come from the King X combos that we check back on the flop, right? And then a little bit of the Queen blocker with a pair of combos because I think they can have King Queen here. Yeah, because they can have King Queen here, the relevant hands to block are going to be a Queen or a King, right? Simple as that. Like bluff catching doesn't have to be very difficult. Like when you have top pair, you call. When you don't, you fold. When you block their strong hands, you call. When you don't, you fold. So blocking 8-7 isn't really relevant enough because a lot of their value hands are going to be these two pair combos, right? They're going to be 10-7, uh, seven, king-7, seven, uh, king-jack and king-queen, right? King-3, three, 3-3, three, three, seven, 7-7. Seven. Like, yes, we're blocking 7-7 seven, seven and 10-7 seven and king-7. Um, not with a... Yeah, with the spades hand, actually. However, it's just we're blocking a bigger majority of their range with the king, right? With the king, look how much more we're blocking for their value hands than blocking just the seven, right? So if we can pick and choose versus an overbet, we're going to always take the king in this scenario. So times I need to call the river here when I actually have a king. Villain ends up showing King Deuce, well played by them, and we just, uh, yeah, we've called too light. King 10 offsuit, I 3 bet pre versus a recreational flop, I C bet, turn, I check back, everything's good so far, and then Villain bets half pot, and I decide to go all in, which is a bit extreme because we're not beating their best hands, right? Um, they can have Jack Jack, they can have. Um, ace 10 in their range they can have uh, I think that's it actually but the problem is they're not going to call much worse right they're not going to call too many worse hands when we shove here rather if we raise 55 they're, st they're going to still call their straights at a frequency there's a straight on the board right there's a four straight there so maybe they call their uh, queen 10 or their ace queen or their queen jack now uh, for the raise 55 sizing. And you can actually see we're supposed to just call a lot of the times with this hand when we have a full house because their uh, range is going to either be straights that are going to fold to our raise um, or sometimes better full houses. So uh, the solver actually does check back because it's hard to get value with this hand. I imagine we our raising range would look like ace 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 10, king king, jack jack, that would be the more um, obvious value hands to raise. No king deuce offsuit? Um, no, there's no king deuce offsuit there. You don't defend that hand preflop. Um, so river, when when villain goes for a, a bet, first of all, they shouldn't be betting half pot or large. They should be betting small. Um, our jams are just going to come from quads, jack 10 of spades specifically, pocket jacks, pocket kings, and pocket aces, right? So one specific combo of, of jack 10, which I guess unblocks their calling range or something weird. I wouldn't look too much into it. Um, and then our bluffs are going to be something like, uh, let's see, I would guess like King Jack or something. Yeah, King Jack, Ace Jack, like two pair that block the villains' full houses. King Jack and Ace Jack mainly, and then some 10-9. Yeah.
All right. Um, let's look at another one more hand. Nine eight suited. We open big blind calls. Flop. I go for a large size. Typically, I use a small or medium size here, but um, decided to get spicy. Went large. Turn, large bet again is good, so we have a straight flush draw. And then on the river, I was thinking in my in my in my quick thought process at the time, I block nines and eights. That's good. That's gonna be the top of their range for calling the river. And um I can get ace high flush draws to fold, king high flush draws to fold. Um but I end up using a large sizing, which I disagree with. I think I should be going over bet here if I do have a sizing. Um, perhaps even jamming, I don't know. But um, they check and I chose the large bet. In reality, the solver doesn't want to bet my hand, hand at all. And I assume that has something to do with blocking spades, right? Like blocking ace nine of spades, blocking ace eight of spades, um, which are going to be the hands we're trying to actually fold out with our nine high. Um, so maybe it's better to bluff something like nine eight of hearts, uh, nine eight of clubs, nine eight of diamonds. Have a look. So by river, check. Looks like our sizing is large or over bets. And our trash hands are going to be. OK, so it even goes as high as Jack 10 being uh, the better bluff because villain still has jacks and villain still has tens for calling the big blind. Right, this is actually their strongest range, not nines and eights. Jacks and tens are, so we really want to be blocking jacks and tens for our bluffs. So when we go to the trash hands, we'll see jack ten suited is the most common hand to bluff, and then a little bit of ten nine suited, something like ten eight suited. So hands that really block the top of their range. That's the that's the kind of heuristic we're looking at, right? Um, you can turn check. Are you talking about the nine eight suited hand? Uh, yes, yes, I think I can. Yeah, you can turn check a small frequency. You can turn check with everything, right? There's there's usually a check back range with everything in most in most scenarios. Um. So yeah, so looking at the trash hands, again, just blocking a jack or a 10 seems to be the best thing to do. And then unblocking spades, right? N uh, most of the non-spades non are the ones that are bluffing. The spades are giving up, it looks like. So if we do have spades in our hands, those are the ones giving up. Um, Queen 10 is actually bluffing. Um, Queen Jack of Spades is actually bluffing. So it's not like we're, you know, giving up all of our spades. King Jack of Spades is bluffing. And again, I think that has a lot to do with um, hmm. Looks like ace king is actually calling. So blocking the king of spades because ace king is calling is pretty cool. But uh, yeah, jacks with a spade again, blocking any any jack x combo. But blocking a king is is uh, relevant here as well. Blocking king three suited, right? Blocking ace king with the king of spades. So that's why we see king jack of spades bluff here. Um, whereas something like 10, nine of spades, that might be more checking because it looks like villain is actually supposed to fold some nines. So this is why we see nine, eight suited being a bad hand to bluff with because against the overbet, villain actually has to fold their nines and eights. I would have guessed that the villain had to call their nines and eights, but again, it's because Jax is the main combo that they should be calling there.
So Villain ended up having 6-5 offsuit, which was unfortunate. Um, if I did over bets, or if I did large bets, which is also part of my range, 6-5 um, offsuit, I think, first of all, isn't even in their range, but 6-5 suited is going to mix call. So that's fine the way Villain played it. I think I played the sizing scheme well, but I just chose the wrong combo to bluff. Um, all right, let's go over one more because this is a concept I need to uh, use more in my game. Ace eight, we defend blind versus blind, flop nine eight five, we call turn check. Um, sorry, turn bet. Uh, we call and then river, they check. And I've been showing down too weak in this scenario. I need to be turning my hand into a bluff. I really have a hard time beating a lot of their combos, right? Um, at this point, it's apparent that there's a straight on the board and a flush, and we have a good blocker to represent that. Um, so it seems like we should be turning our hand into a bluff with the 150 sizing, or even just the 60 sizing, right? Like having uh, you know, small blind check turn is, is going to be... Um, or sorry, small blind checking river is going to be an open range we can attack. Like they're going to check a lot of their ace jack, their king jack. Once they were semi bluffing the turn and got there, they're going to check like maybe their ace 10 that they bet turn and check river with. They shouldn't be betting large, I think, with that hand. But a lot of their semi bluffs on turn are going to contain a jack. And then once they get there on the river, they're going to check. So just like we saw, they have ace jack with an ace of spades. Now, I'm not saying they're going to fold that hand, but I should have definitely found a bluff with my hand. All right. Now, very quickly, I'm going to go over some tournament stuff. Everyone's favorite. I'm actually pretty happy with my tournament scores. I haven't been making very big EV losses. If you look at all of my tournament uploads, my correct score is pretty low, which I think has a lot to do with uh, wizard glitching out on some hand histories, but my average EV loss has never been very high for my tournaments, like 0 0.02, um, 0.01 tournaments. This is 0.03, probably my highest, but I've been like, I've been quick to find, you know, a good score with tournaments. I just need to get the correct score up a bit. I think I'm missing too many standard preflop spots. Uh, so let's go over the tournament stuff real quick. And then I'm probably going to go on delay and play a little bit just because I, I get fired up to play when I do all this, this studying. Uh, King, queen. So villain limps, and I have this bad habit of just shoving versus a limp at the stack depth. Um, we really shouldn't be shoving unless I have, I think, like 15 or under big blinds um, as my default aggressive play. So at 20 big blinds, um, I do have shoves. There are shoves, but the shoves are going to be these weak pocket pairs and weak ace off X off suits. Uh, ace X offsuits. Offsuit Ace X. There we go. <laughs> I knew I had it in me. Um, so the ones that want to, you know, the top of our range, right, are going to be uh, raising, raising 3X most commonly. So if we raise 3X and they limp jam, uh, the hands that we're calling are, you know, King Queen, which is what I had here. And then all of the strongest parts of our range, even as far down as King-10 offsuit, Ace-9 offsuit, Ace-5 suited. So when someone limps here, we just need to 3x and call a check raise jam instead of jam ourselves. Why did I miss this hand? What's this hand? Okay. 10-9 uh, offsuit, we open, button calls, and flop Ace-Jack-6. Constantly get 92% score for all my uploads on DTO Wizard at 25 NL. Is this good or do all the regs get about that? I have no idea. I don't play the 25 NL games, so I couldn't tell you what the regs are getting. Um, not sure. Uh, but as you can see, my average is around 96 for cash games. Uh, and I am 
on the higher end of uh, winning players. So take that for whatever, you know, uh, that's worth. I think around 93 to 94 is probably still winning. If I had to guess, but what matters almost more is your average EV loss, right? What's your average EV loss with the 92% score? If you're, if you're getting 98% correct, but your average EV loss is, you know, one, then you're just, you're not making money. You're punting somewhere, right? So here I get a little out of line by C betting flop. Um, I'm still unfamiliar with like short stack play out of position. Uh, in cash game deep stack, you do a lot of checking, but I think it's going to be the same thing uh, in this scenario, especially 10 9 offsuit. We really want to have at least a diamond in our hand. We want to have some kind of bluff equity here. So I end up going with a, uh, a C bet. Uh, turn, I get out of line again. If I do have a diamond in my hand on the flop and get to the turn, um, it looks like we're going to mostly be giving up at that point, right? Uh, maybe some small bets on turn, right? But for the most part, this is like a good bet check line and then betting turn with more equity like diamonds or clubs or 4-5 or something with better... Uh, better equity in our trash hands range. So something that either has good blockers like king 10 and queen 10 or something with more equity like uh, queen 7 of clubs or queen 7 of diamonds or 9 7 of diamonds. Uh, this one looks like an anomaly actually, 9 7. Uh, but I guess 9 7 is good to be betting because it's blocking ace 9 and ace 7, two of the stronger combos for a uh, button to continue in the hand. Um, so these combos here, a7 and ace9, right? Um, ace9 offsuit. Blocking ace9 offsuit is really good, which is why I was thinking I could bet the turn with 10-9, right? But in fact, we're actually blocking folds with the 10 of spades. So having the 10 of spades in my hand is actually really bad because a lot of their folds are going to be like queen 10, king 10 of spades, like these hands here, right? So, and pocket tens. So we're actually blocking a lot of folds with the tens. So we don't really want to have a 10 for barreling. Um, and then once we get to the river, I jammed, which again is kind of just weird because I am blocking the nine of clubs, which is good now. The river jam might be fine, but the turn bet is bad. Um, and the flop bet is also bad. So I got to be careful getting too out of line there. My average EV loss is 0.05. Um, yeah, that's pretty high. I would work on that before trying to get more correct. I would look at what is causing the biggest parts of your uh, leak, right? Like, why are you leaking so much EV loss um, on average? Like, I would try and start narrowing down some trends in your play like are you always seeing a big ev loss in four bet pots if so start working on four bet pots uh king queen oh we already looked at this one ace jack uh i just called an all in here i kind of knew this was too wide i should have just folded i think ace queen offsuit is just going to be the uh, threshold pre-flop here this was me just kind of guessing at where the, the threshold was. Ace-Jack is not it. Ace-Queen is pocket seven. The, the, the lower to mid pocket pairs are almost always better to call an all in um, because villain's gonna have weaker like connected cards at the top, which we still are flipping with. Whereas when we call all in with like weaker ace jack, we're going to just be dominated by uh, ace king, ace queen, pocket jacks, and then the lower pocket pairs are still flipping with us, right? So the upside of getting in weak connected top cards is is a lot lower than the 
the middle pairs. Ace-8 offsuit. I open button, get jammed on, and I should have called a jam here, 25 bigs. This is, um, this is just strong enough to call. Small blind should be jamming any pair. Um, any suited connect, um, any suited Broadway, uh, some like Jack nine, maybe Jack 10. Yeah. So this is what their range looks like. 10, nine, Jack nine, um, suited aces, uh, which we dominate. So let's look at what we dominate, right. Or are flipping with at least, um, Ace eight. So you can see, like, look at all these combos that we're in really good shape against. Sometimes it's hard to like envision it, but yeah, ace eight, really strong hand for calling there. Ace jack, we raise, flop, I check, turn, I check, and river, I check, and villain bet. I should not be bluff catching ace jack here. Um, maybe if I had a spade in my hands. Yeah, if I have a spade in my hand, I can mix call and jam. Or if I have ace jack with a spade, we don't need to, to bluff catch non spades. This is me just like trying to exploit a population tendency, which I think maybe people are over bluffing the river, but I need to keep myself in line there. Uh, King jack offsuit versus early position open. So flatting the small blind is a heavy thing here, and it's something you need to do with like offsuit broadways. Um, I think maybe queen 10 could be the threshold. Do you think population is finding all the shoves, like the lower asex suited? Which hand? Can we look at villain shoving range? Which hand? <laughs> preflop, preflop, preflop. Here we go. Uh, queen 10, yeah, queen 10 is the bottom here. So we can still call as weak as even jack 10. You had ace 8 offsuit? Okay. Um, do you think population is finding all these subs? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But the, uh, I think, I think most preflop stuff, you have to assume they are. Because the first thing most people work on is preflop, right? There's so many preflop charts out there. There's so many preflop courses and stuff. And I think if you're going to assume anything, assume that people are going to play preflop to a competent level that they're going to find uh, the 10 big blind jam spots. They're going to find the 25 big blind rejam spots. Um, Maybe once you get to the like 60 big blinds, like are they going to find the four bet jams? Are they going to find the three bet bluffs? Like that kind of stuff would be maybe where you would find more deviations. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend time worrying about uh, 25 bigs and under for preflop stuff. I think most players are going to be fairly competent there. Um, what happened here? We raise king queen, flop call. Should a small bet here, blocking both top pairs. Turn, small bet again, river shove. Okay. That's not really learning much for me. I'm just probably sizing down, I guess. I guess we'll, let's, here, let's deep dive into it quick. <laughs> deep dive into it quick. That is not how things work. Um, okay, so do we have a large size is my first question on King Queen three. The answer is not really. Kinda, kinda not really, really low frequency. And it's going to be very polarized to aces, uh, top of range, King Jack, King 10. But interestingly enough, King Queen mostly wants to size down, which 
I think it has something to do with blocking the queen x combos of villain, which is where we get a lot of our value from king x, right? Which is why we see king queen being a small bet uh, more of the time, and then something like king jack being a larger bet. Makes sense in theory. So finding that in game sometimes is a little tough, but yeah. Taking time to just recognize that is important. Uh, King-9 offsuit versus hijack open. We can mix three better call here. Uh, flop, I decide to check, and I folded in the spot I should have checked called or check raised. I actually even thought about this in game, but I thought maybe I needed the King of Diamonds in order to do this, but even King-9 with the Nine of Diamonds can, can peel. Um, should not fold small blind. Again, this is just a good spot to call. So I'm seeing a trend, right? Like I was mentioning earlier, uh, when you keep uploading and you keep seeing a trend of spots you're leaking, then just study that spot. So I keep seeing a trend of myself overfolding the small blind. So I need to really hone in on defending the small blind um, in tournaments. Right, so that's a that's a drill that I would set up for myself and then just start going over it. All right, I think that's going to be it for the study session part. Um, I'm going to cut this and upload it to YouTube because I thought it was a pretty good study session today. And uh, I'm going to try and do that more often in the future. After the W Coop, I'm going to make some uh, I'm going to make some more consistent content of my morning study routines and 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 what you guys uh, enjoy.